Hi, Solano kids and families. How are you all doing? I hope you're hanging in there, and I really hope that you're all staying healthy. I miss you. Thank you for joining us again for our weekly worship, prayer, and Bible story. Today's worship songs are My Lighthouse and Made for This. Made for This is a good song for us to think about right now because it's got some good lines in it that are nice reminders for us. He is with me. He is for me. I am not alone. Remember that even though sometimes right now you could get lonely or feel like you're all alone because you're missing your friends, you're missing your teachers or other people, just know this, you are not alone. You've got your Solano family missing you and praying for you, and you always have Jesus right there beside you. He's with all of us right now during this difficult time. So just hold on to that. Our prayer for this week is the St. Michael prayer. And I get so happy when I think about this because I'm imagining that all of you are getting really good at it. And I can't wait until we're all together again and we can say it together. It's going to be amazing. Now, go do the worship and do the prayer with your families and come back here in a few minutes. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all his evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How did it go? You had to teach your family another song. I hope that you all had fun. This coming Sunday is the last Sunday of Lent, and it has a special name. Do you know what it is? It's called Palm Sunday, and it marks the beginning of Holy Week. Why do you think it's called Palm Sunday? That's right. It's when Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and all the people lined up and they used palm branches to welcome him into the city. Do you remember ever getting a palm leaf at church in the past? This is the Sunday when we do that. We stand outside of church with our palm leaves and we hear a reading from the Bible about Jesus coming into Jerusalem and people praising him. Since we aren't able to go to church this year, you can make your own palm branch at home. It's easy and it's fun. All you need is some green paper or white paper that you color green and you trace your handprint on the paper about eight or ten times. You cut out those handprints and then you tape them like leaves onto some popsicle sticks. And then you can have your own palm branch for mass this Sunday. Now let's watch the story. God's Story Palm Sunday so part of God's story happened on a day we call Palm Sunday, and it begins like this. Remember how God sent his son Jesus to rescue us? Well, not everybody believed that Jesus was really God's son and the rescuer, but the ones who did believe in him did something pretty cool on Palm Sunday. It started just like any other day for Jesus. He was heading into Jerusalem with his disciples. But before they got there, Jesus did something surprising. He stopped and sent two of his disciples to go get a young donkey from a nearby village. He even told them exactly where the owner had last tied it up. They weren't sure why he needed the donkey, but they obeyed him. Kids, would you be willing to obey Jesus even if he asked you to do something you didn't understand? Anyway, when the disciples got back with the donkey, they threw their coats on its back like a saddle and Jesus climbed up. Pretty soon, the disciples saw why Jesus needed it. See, crowds of people came to the road and started laying coats and tree branches to make a path for Jesus. When this happened, many people recognized that Jesus was a king. Only kings came into a city like this. So Jesus rode the donkey, like he was a one-man parade. And the crowds praised Jesus by yelling things like, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, and peace in heaven and glory in the highest, because they believed Jesus was the rescuer. But remember how some people didn't believe Jesus was God's son? Well, they told Jesus to make everybody stop yelling. They didn't think Jesus deserved to be treated like a king. You know what Jesus said? He told them, if they keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. Well, the people who didn't believe in Jesus didn't like thinking about people or rocks praising him. And that made Jesus sad. He actually started crying. And not just crying, weeping. Here, the people were standing next to the rescuer they'd been wanting and waiting for their whole lives, and they were missing it. But even though Jesus cried, Palm Sunday isn't a sad story. Easter is all about Jesus' amazing rescue, and Palm Sunday is a reminder of just how special that rescue is, and how much Jesus loves everyone. And that's the story of Palm Sunday. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus was traveling. He sent his disciples to get a donkey. People spread coats and branches on the road. They praised Jesus. Some people didn't recognize that he was the king. That made Jesus sad. He had come to rescue them. A few days later, he would show just how much he loves us. And that's a part of God's story. Wow. 
Jesus made quite an entrance. That was a big parade, and Jesus deserved it. Remember how he had traveled all around, helping people, performing miracles, and teaching them of God's love? People had heard about him, but most people had never seen him before. Now he was coming to Jerusalem, the capital and the most important city. This was something the Bible had been promising for hundreds of years. Someone would come and save them. It was finally happening. This is what everyone was waiting for. And people were going crazy like they had just won the Super Bowl. What kind of person were they expecting? Well, they thought that he was going to be a great king or a military leader who was going to conquer the Romans. But Jesus wasn't rich like a normal king. He didn't have a big fancy horse or a strong, terrifying army. Can you imagine a big, important king riding into town on a simple little donkey? You see, Jesus wasn't a normal king trying to show that he was important and forcing everyone to serve him. Jesus was just the opposite. How was he the opposite? Tell somebody near you. Jesus came to show love and to serve people. They knew he was someone special, but they didn't realize that he was God and that he was going to save them from something much greater than the Romans. What are some ways that you can show love and serve people this week at home with your families? What is a way that you can show love to Jesus this week? Tell your parents how you're going to do these things, how you're going to show love to others, and how you're going to show love to Jesus, and invite them to do the same. And I'll see you back here next Tuesday at 4. Have a great week. Goodbye.